Hey everyone, back with our second video in the week on structural functionalism. This time we're going to take a look at a classic structural functional analysis, um, which is called the Davis-Moore thesis. So uh, Kingsley Davis and Wilbert Moore are two names that you really don't need to know all that much other than in connection with their thesis. Um, so a little bit of background. This happens around 1945. So we you know, last week we dealt with um, W.E.B. Du Bois and Charlotte Perkins Gilman and their kind of radical rethinking of uh, how we need to think about the constituents of society. Um, everybody up until then had talked about generic people. Du Bois and Gilman both make a really, or they make separately really good arguments that we shouldn't be thinking in terms of people, we should be thinking in terms of categories. Um, Charlotte Perkins Gilman dies around 1935. Uh, W.E.B. Du Bois is going to be alive during the time that Davis and Moore are working, but the important thing to remember is I've made a big deal about Du Bois and Gilman. In the mid-20th century in America, they were not considered particularly influential. Davis and Moore were not thinking in terms of important, socially important categories of people. Um, they were thinking back to the way the, our uh, founders of the discipline thought, which is in terms of generic interchangeable people. So that's an important piece of context. Um, I will try to bring Du Bois and Gilman back in as often as I can, but it's important to realize that most everybody we're going to talk about, at least for the next few weeks, is not going to be concerned with, uh, with those important aspects of social location. Okay, so Davis and Moore come along, and they're writing in 1945, and they're interested in doing a structural functional analysis, specifically of the idea of stratification, or what we more kind of conventionally call it uh, income inequality, or economic inequality. Um, they say, so we're in the mid-40s, and e economic inequality has been a part of American society for really forever. So it's a durable element of society. From a functionalist perspective, it must be playing some role, having some important function for the perpetuation of society. So let's try to understand that. That is the point of the Davis-Moore thesis. Okay. And so what they do is they start out, first of all, by defining stratification. Importantly, stratification in the way they define it is slightly different than the conventional way we talk about economic inequality. We talk about it in terms of individuals. They said, you know, the individuals come and go generation after generation. Um, you've got new people who are taking their, their place in this economic uh, stratification. But what's durable is the system of positions from the CEO of a, sorry, I'm off camera, from the CEO of a corporation down to the lowest paid worker in that corporation. All of those people are going to live and work there and then retire at a certain point, and they will be replaced by other people, but that structure still exists. So that's going to be their unit of analysis, the system of positions that goes from highest paid to lowest paid. And they're not just going to be concerned about um, within one particular corporation. They're going to be concerned about all of the positions in terms of their varying levels of payment and prestige from top to bottom. Okay, so that's their unit. What function does that system of positions that are paid differently uh, what function does that have for society? And their answer for that is that, sorry, let me get my script in the right place. So their answer for that is that it plays the function of motivating people. Specifically, um, it is used to motivate the best people to take on the most important jobs in the society. The economic rewards and the prestige that are attached to those top most important positions incentivizes people to go after them. For example, if every job got paid the same, what would be the incentive for the most capable people to try to pursue the hardest jobs? 
being a janitor, as I used to be, is, uh, is an important job, but it's relatively easy to do. Any person can, you know, empty trash and can uh, clean floors and clean windows again, as I did. Um, but not every, and if, if that job gets done well or gets done badly, the, the consequences are sort of minor, say Davis and Moore. But the CEO of a corporation, if they do a bad job, the corporation goes under and hundreds or thousands of people lose their job. So it's really important to get not just anybody into that top position, to get the most intelligent, most capable people into that position. How do you do that? They say you stratify the positions according to uh, economic reward and prestige. That way you have a competition in which the most capable people will end up out competing everybody else to be in that top position. That is the function of economic stratification in a, in a particular society, to get the most capable people into those most important jobs. Easy. Okay, now you probably have going off in your head a bunch of potential criticisms for that. It seems too simple. And uh, a lot of people would say you're absolutely right. So let's talk about the three main criticisms of this idea that economic inequality exists, it functions for the benefit of society by getting the best people into the most important jobs. Criticism number one is the presumption that the jobs that are the most prestigious and the most, uh, that, that get you the highest pay really are the most important ones. That's an open question. First of all, I mean, they were writing in the mid-1940s when professional athletes weren't paid all that much, but nowadays a lot of the highest paid people work in entertainment, both in terms of professional athletics, but also in terms of Hollywood. Would we say because they are the most highly paid positions that being a quarterback is one of the most important jobs for our society, that that is the most important thing? It's a hard, it's, uh, critics of Davis and Moore would say, no, it, that clearly is a flaw in their thesis. But even if we were to say, like factor out those entertainment oriented jobs, let's think about a doctor at a hospital versus the janitorial staff at a hospital. A doctor at a hospital has a very important job, very specialized. You need great people in those positions. They save lives, but the, they save one life at a time. The janitors at those places who are in charge of the public sanitation for a place, it, and we could even go down to the garbage workers who take out the trash at those places, they are responsible for the health of hundreds of people, thousands of people. And if you're talking about sanitation workers for a city, potentially millions of people. Is it reasonable to say that a doctor's job, though requiring more specialization, is really more important than the sanitation workers who are taking the trash and making it so that our public spaces are free of diseases? That is another criticism, but I'm sorry, that's still part of that same first criticism. The idea that the most highly paid positions really are the most important for our society. Okay, so that's criticism number one. Criticism number two says, okay, let's take Davis and Moore at their word and say that, okay, so yes, doctors are more important than, uh, than, janitor, than the janitorial staff. Given that, how do we know the best people really are ending up in those positions? Davis and Moore say you create the stratification of positions and you have a competition and the best people will win out. Well, how do you know that that's really true? Let's go back to a corporation. We know how well a CEO at a particular corporation does based on you know how much money the corporation brings in. But we don't know the counterexample to that. We don't know how well somebody who didn't get the job would have done. What if the janitor and the CEO switched positions? 
Is it possible that the janitor would have done a better job? We don't know. We will never know the answer to that question, and that is another criticism. There's this sort of self-fulfilling prophecy with regard to Davis Moore that says, well, if you ended up in that position, you must have been the most qualified person. Not necessarily true, which leads us to our third criticism, which is going to be the Gilman and Du Bois criticism. The idea that, historically speaking, women have had less access than men to those top positions. Not because of ability, but as Gilman says, this sexual economic um, system that just says women don't belong in those positions. And Du Bois would make a similar, or made a similar argument when he said that race causes people to sometimes act against their economic interests. What that has to say about Davis and Moore is that the person hiring may be a racist. And it's possible qualified black or Latinx or American Indian or Asian American people may have been passed over not because they weren't the most capable, but purely based on racial uh, considerations. Okay, that I think finishes us up. Ooh, gosh, a little bit over 10 minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, for Davis Moore to conclude. Those are valid criticisms. I don't think it means that we should throw out Davis Moore altogether. First of all, it is a great example flawed, but a great example of the process of structural functional analysis. Thinking through, here's an enduring structure, what function might it fill? Second of all, the fact that there are holes in it, which is valid criticism, doesn't mean it's completely worthless. At the end of this unit, we will, we will talk about a guy named Herbert Gans, um, who is one of my, he is my hero within structural functionalism, who says, you know what? We do have a system this, that, is, that does involve motivation and does bring people up, uh, that does bring people into those positions. And he'll say, if we don't like the fact that it's economic inequality that provides the motivation, that doesn't mean we, that we just ditch the idea of needing that function to be filled. What we maybe need to do is think, if we don't like the economic inequality part, but we need the function of distributing the most capable people into the most important positions, we need to think through another way of meeting that function. Okay, um, that is it for Davis and Moore. In the next video, we will look at a guy who's going to go from just studying one structure and its function to the entire organism of society. And putting it within its ecosystem of other societies. His name is Talcott Parsons, and we will see about him in our next video.